I can't sing. I mean, I can sing, but it just wouldn't sound as. But I can dance. And so the first piece I want to do is an ode to my mentor who brought me into the dancing part of myself. It was around this time he passed away, so I'm going to allow my ancestor to come and join us right now. Ashe? Dancing's for girls. That's what I used to say until I met this wise man at my middle school one day. He said, Lajas, do you know why you're here? I said, no, but Mr. Weeks, why you all in my ear? He said I had a unique style and rhythm in my heart. And if I followed his ways, he could teach me to start a new style of dancing, not just something for girls. That's when I realized this is what I want to do in this world. He said, tap. And he gave me a beat, put some black leather shoes with metal laced to my feet. He told me tap. And that's just what I did. I took his beat, switched it up, and became a tap dance kid. Now, I could have sold drugs or stayed out in the streets, but this wise black man said, walk with me. He said. That rhythm that you're snapping right now is called a clave. Say clave. A clave rhythm. You hear it in Afro beats. You hear it in salsa. You hear it in hip hop. Where my hip hop heads at, huh? Where my hip hop heads at? I'm a 15 year educator and I tell my eighth graders all the time I come from big hip hop, big music, like Biggie, Big L, Big Pine. I tell them, y'all little music compared to us, because I'm an 80s baby raised in the 90s, so I come from big music, right? Y'all little music. Lil Baby, Lil Yachty, Lil Uzi, <laughs> Lil Dirt. But it's all love, though, because it's all hip hop, right? But artists like Dead Prez and Tony Touch, who said, my people, my people, we struggle, we struggle together. I'm with you, I'm with you, my people, whatever, whatever. A-F-R-I-C-A, Puerto Rico, Haiti, N-J-A, New York and Cali, F-L-A. No, it ain't about where you stay, it's about the motherland. Yeah. But I didn't understand because I'm a Latino. Where are my Latinos at? All right, not a lot of us here. So... I need your help if you have a Latino friend or if you've ever had an empanada or a pastelito. Okay, okay, okay. You with me? You with me now? If you know the lyrics to the song, suavemente. So, so there's not a lot of us here, but we here. So when I say Latinos, I need you to make some noise like, like you from one of them islands yourself. Where are my Latinos? Or should I say wanna be gringos? <laughs> what we don't understand is we just Spanish speaking Negroes with learned European egos. <laughs> Got the nerve to be calling myself Hispanic or Latino. But I don't really understand my orgullo Latino. 
Orgullo Latino translates to Latino pride, but that's something I've struggled with deep inside. A struggle I've tried to find that which is me, understanding that my roots run deeper than the Caribbean Sea. I understand that Cuba was once called Cabana, and Dominican Republic was referred to as Quisqueya, or even before that, Haiti, so I can no longer say I'm just a Latino born in the Washington Heights of NYC. But before I get into my story, I always want to know what is the truth that you really seek? Because it's easier for me to be up here on stage spitting some smooth poetry so you can snap your fingers and be like, ooh, that's deep. But I just hope that when I'm in front of my sisters and brothers who may have been just as miseducated as me, who at one point was probably striving for some college degree, going for their bachelor's, master's, or PhD, I hope that you took at least one class in Africana studies. You see, because we must begin with history. Yet his story has left me in misery, wondering where it is that my people be mi gente. So I had to take a journey. I found my elders. They sat me down at their table. They brought me back into time, and it was there at the cradle that I found my true roots and felt a little more stable. See, if you don't know where you're from, then you don't know where you're going. You keep on keeping on, and they'll keep on showing us just black or white political fights, the days of the slave trade, or just the civil rights. And I tried and I tried with all of my might, but in no classroom could I find this Latino pride. That lack of education is what forced me to look deep inside, trying to find a part of me that allowed me to identify. I'm not black enough to be black. I'm not white enough to be white. So I took a deep sigh when I realized that to call myself Hispanic or Latino in itself is a lie. It's a lie because if the term Hispanic wasn't given to us until 1976, then what were my people called in 1975? So I say, what we about to do right here is go back. <laughs> Way back. To when my people was Carib or Arawak, and in honor of my ancestors, my great great abuelitas, my great great abuelitos, I say, don't call me Hispanic, don't even call me Latino, because I'm an African first, and if not that, I'm Taino. But they be like, how he be always on his African shit when his skin's so light? Ah, uh -huh. no, we don't identify with color. We identify with culture and consciousness. And when we do that, then we know for sure what's right. So I tell my people, I hope they listen to this public service announcement that shouldn't be missed. Mi gente, mi gente. Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, but most of all, my Dominicans are in complete denial of how black they really is. And yet, most of them won't listen to me. I'm writing the miseducation of the Latino. When they read it, most of them won't completely agree. But I leave them with a quote by my brother, my elder, Dr. Nkrumah, who set my mind free when he told me, I am an African, not because I was born in Africa, but because Africa was born in me. Peace.